In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to everyone who is joining us on our webcam. As we come here on this night when we think of the gift of the Eucharist on this retreat at Mass as we pray along with Sister Claire and learn from her life about the summit and source of our worship as Catholics as the Second Vatican Council describes the Eucharist. The greatest gift that Christ left behind was the gift of himself for us. If we have this gift, we won't hunger, we won't thirst for things that really don't matter. All of us do that. Sister Claire did that. But she discovered in Christ someone who would satisfy all her hungers and all her thirsts. We ask forgiveness at the beginning of Mass the times we have turned to things apart from Christ to satisfy the hunger and thirst of the depths of our heart, mind and soul, our depth, hunger for love, for God's love as we ask forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, holy angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who open wide the gates of the heavenly kingdom to those reborn of war and the Holy Spirit, pour out on your servants an increase of the grace you have bestowed, that having been purged of all sins, they may lack nothing, that in your kindness you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders and the scribes, You stubborn people with your pagan hearts and pagan ears, you are always resisting the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. Can you name a single prophet your ancestors never persecuted? In the past they killed those who foretold the coming of the Just One. And now you have become his betrayers, his murderers. You who had the law brought to you by angels are the very ones who have not kept it. They were infuriated when they heard this and ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at God's right hand. I can see heaven thrown open, he said and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this all the members of the council shouted out and stopped their ears with their hands. Then they all rushed at him, sent him out of the city and stoned him. The witnesses put down their clothes at the feet of a young man called Saul. As they were stoning him, Stephen said in invocation, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and said aloud, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And with these words he fell asleep. Saul entirely approved of the killing. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The people said to Jesus, What sign will you give us to show us that we should believe in you? What work will you do? Our fathers had manna to eat in the desert. As scripture says, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you the bread from heaven, the true bread, the bread of God. Is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread always. Jesus answered, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. What sign will you give us to show us that we should believe in you? Jesus has asked today. And that is a question that is so often asked in today's world. What sign is there that we should believe in Jesus? That's what our world tells us today. Yes, there are followers out there of Jesus, but we can't see him. Where is he? All the followers are, surely, are just people who listened to his teaching 2,000 years ago and say, yeah, I want to live like that, or if that sounds good, that sounds nice. And Jesus' teaching is put aside every other teaching in today's world. And if that's what you're into, good, I'm into this other teaching. But Jesus came to say, I am the way, I am the truth. I am the life, not a way, a truth, or a life. So yes, we as Christians make a bold claim, the boldest of all, that Jesus is the Son of God, God present among us in this world. And we as Catholics have at the source and summit of our lives the greatest gift he left us of his presence as the Son of God, his risen mystical body present for us at every Mass in the Eucharist. What sign should, will you give us so we should believe in you? That's the question that is asked today, not just of those who are not Christian. It's a question that's asked many times by Catholics. Why, why should we believe in you? And why should we believe that the bread and wine is you? Robert Barron, the Word and Fire series in the Bishop in America, spoke at a conference in Los Angeles of religious leaders involved in education, to talk about the terrible statistic that 70% of all Catholics who go to Mass do not believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. They see it as something different, a symbol, or as a meal together, or just a basic remembering. But as another woman likes us to declare, whose cause is being promoted. An American woman, Dorothy Day, when she was asked that question, after her becoming a living witness to the Eucharist, she said, if it's just a symbol, I don't want it. But if it's Christ, it's, what? it's all we want and all we need. And today's gospel it's so apt because we're told I am the bread of life he comes to me will never be hungry 
He who believes in me will never thirst. And today we have come to reflect on how that played out in the life of Sister Claire. Seventy percent don't really believe in the real presence. Why is that? Well, we could put it down to a lot of things, mostly perhaps poor catechesis. But one of the ways in which we are catechized today, which has helped us to understand the Mass, is a way using five words. Come, listen, break, eat, and go. And the life of Sister Claire, that's what we see happening. Because her life became a living Eucharist. What does the word Eucharist mean? In Greek, it means thanksgiving. You heard that in our psalm this evening. And in Colossians 3.16, St. Paul tells us with psalms and inspired songs to God, always give thanks. And surely that's what Claire Crockett's life became, a thanksgiving to God. So taking those five words, come. I think we heard last night that from Shauna that Claire didn't really want to come at the start. And she's like us all because we think there's something more that will satisfy that hunger or thirst. For her, it might have been the trip to the shop at that time. But we all think there's a more important hunger and thirst. We think that a hunger and thirst that we all have within us can be satisfied with something less than God. But she did go. She did come. More importantly, the Lord, Lord brought her. So often when we say that we come to Mass, we must remember, no, not really. The Lord brings us to Mass. We are responding to something deeper within us, to a hunger that we know needs to be met. So she came, and we hear, of course, she came and went on the retreat for Holy Week in Spain. And in that week, there was various talks and the subject of Eucharist came up. And Claire says, Eucharist, what's that? There was a sister there, Sister Ruth. In whatever way Sister Ruth was able to explain it, Claire began to enter into the second part of the Mass, which is listening. And that's what we do. We come. We acknowledge our hunger and thirst because we know that we need God's mercy at the beginning of Mass. And then we listen. We listen to God's word. And Claire listened to what the Eucharist was. Not just that one time. But she got a glimpse of it in her life. A very important, a kiss of it. This was a, this was, when she went up to kiss the cross, it wasn't she who was being kissed the cross. It was the Lord who was kissing her with his love for her because she speaks of that moment as a profound moment of conversion when she began to say, I realize that Jesus loves me and he died for me. And that's what we hear at every Mass. And that, that celebration on Good Friday is not Mass. It used to be called the Mass of the Pre-Sanctified where we come and adore the cross, where we get actually to this, a center of the mass, thanking God for sending his son and thanking Jesus for dying for us to save us from our sins. And that was the moment when Claire realized 
she listened. But Claire, like us all, listened in the midst of our brokenness, of our weakness, our sins. And sometimes what happens is in the immensity of God's love for us, so profound that we want to run away. We want to run away from that life-changing moment because really at the end of the day we have to learn that it's all or nothing. And as we know, Claire began to think that her hunger and thirst will be satisfied and her desire to be famous presenter, actor, all those things that we hear, hear she talked about. Yet, when she began to try and satisfy that deep hunger for love, it literally made her sick. A sickness that was to be seen in that moment when she was being sick. In that moment, in that moment of her greatest weakness, the Lord kissed her again with his love and called her to her greater dignity and helped her to see you hurting yourself like this is hurting me so much. So often what we do in terms of self-destructive behaviors harms herself but hurts Christ even more because he loves us so much he doesn't want us there. So in her brokenness she began to listen again and in her brokenness she brought her brokenness to the Lord to be transformed. And she got the courage to go and to join the sisters. And she said, I want to become like them. I want to become one of them. Because there was something about them. There was something about the joy that they had. They seemed to be thanking God all the time for what they had. For who they were. Who they've become. So over her years of pre-formation or novitiate, she was solely being changed to becoming Christ, the Eucharist, living within her. That's the broke bit. Eat is that time when she spent with the Lord in community with her sisters Feasting what the Lord wanted to offer her. But in order to feast from that, she had to fast. Fast from those junk things that we all need to fast from in our lives. So that her appetite could be increased. And one of them, of course, was the idea of fame. So that it wasn't any longer Claire Crockett. It was Christ in Claire Crockett's heart mind and soul and that she was slowly being transformed the bread and wine are instantaneously transformed here at mass she slowly became that living Eucharist in Colossians 3.16 that is the language become a living Eucharist so having consumed the feast that the Lord was offering her in the Eucharist and that presented in community also and also in her formation she was ready to go the last part and to bring Christ to others to be Christ for others and there's two three striking images of it but one I've just seen this evening on the front of the booklet. The joy of Sister Claire on the front of that booklet. 
arms outstretched with joy. She is a living presence of the Christ in the world. She is becoming the person that Christ wants her to be and each and every one of us to be using our unique personalities and yes, our unique brokenness and sins to become this living Eucharist. Also, the singing. We're told that she never, ever, ever refused to sing God's praises. Even if she was tired, she continued to do that because she realized that love is gift. Not what I get, it's gift. I have been given so much by the Lord, I become who the Lord wants me to be. By making, may he make us an everlasting gift to you, was said in the Eucharistic prayer in the old translation. May we become an eternal offering to you. That is what Sister Claire became. And that's what we're offered to become. Not living for ourselves, but living out of joy for the Lord and for others. And then, of course, she brought Christ to others in the Eucharist. The man dying of AIDS, Paco. She visited him, bringing the Eucharist. So much so that by the time Sister Claire left him over a period of time, he didn't want anything to disturb him from his prayer in the bed. He was preparing for the Eucharist or thanking God for receiving the Eucharist. He became a living Eucharist. We too can become living Eucharists. When we recognize that Christ can change and transform us, if we first of all recognize his presence among us in the Eucharist. And one of the greatest witnesses to that, one of the greatest signs to that, surely is Sister Claire. What sign will you give us to show that we should believe in you? In a world where unbelief seems to have the final say, we shouldn't be here tonight. We shouldn't be listening to this tonight. But we are. And you know the joy is? We're here because the Lord wants us to be here. And he wants us to have the same joy that Sister Claire had by focusing our lives by listening to his words, by receiving him in the Eucharist, the food with which we will never be hungry or never be thirsty. to stand for the prayers of faith. God's presence in the Eucharist comforts us in times of fear and doubt. Let us ask God to strengthen and uphold all his people. We pray for this community gathered in faith that our lifestyles may be an effective sign of Christ's presence in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, grace to hear us. We pray that political leaders and governments will work to ensure that all people can live in unrestricted religious freedom. Lord, hear us. Lord, grace to hear us. We pray for those who are troubled by doubts about the Eucharist. May they remember that Jesus did not condemn Thomas, but showed him a way of resolving his concerns. Lord, hear us. Lord, grace to us. We pray for peace, peace in our world, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, grace to us. 
We pray for our, our miraculous intercession from Sister Claire, that the Lord would show the church that she inhabits eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, grace, see us. We turn to Mary, our mother, asking her to help us to focus our eyes on Christ, as she did as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we have not seen, but we believe. Keep us always in your love and bless us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Since the day we offered you the church has given you the hands of the Pope's terrified. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but above all at this time to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night 
he was betrayed. He himself took bread and given you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave new thanks. He said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Granted, we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance for your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, St. Columba, St. Cecilia, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession your presence we rely for a failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Dono, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, who all are pleased with you that are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, and form the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. You only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And the body of Christ goes forever. Invite those joining us in the webcam to make your spiritual communion now. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Since I cannot now receive you, I know my desire and the thirst for you means that you come to me with the power of your grace and mercy. Help me always to believe in your presence in the Eucharist. Your sign and your real presence that you will never leave us until the end of time.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. I invite you to be seated now for our witness testimony. I was invite Sharon Dorn, Sister Claire's friend, to come forward. Hello, everyone. Myself and Claire's story began when we started St. Cecilia's. Both from the Brandywell, we lived just five minutes apart. A quick walk through the market took me from 223 Lone Moor Road to 12 Iona Court. From day one at school, we grew very close. I was always the studious, conscientious type. Anxiety levels were often through the roof at the very mention of an exam. My goal was to go to university and enter the world of science. Claire, on the other hand, was creative to the core. She oozed confidence and was so passionate about being famous and successful in life. Our different traits made us great friends. 
we were always there to listen and laugh together. <laughs> Theatrics was Claire's passion, and she loved nothing more than to perform. She didn't need a stage, but always had an audience. On many occasions, we enjoyed plentiful monologues when she would take the hot seat. A tall wooden stool positioned in the centre of Mrs. Burns' English class. During those moments, we were all transfixed, and laughter rolled through the room. Her escapades carried on into a tiny room outside Mrs. Warren's sixth form study. This tiny room, nicknamed the Chokey, was set aside for small group activities. More times than enough, Claire held court here, and we herded in like cattle. Her talents didn't go unnoticed. That would have been impossible. Her claims to fame include productions for Channel 4 and Nickelodeon as well as a role in a Bloody Sunday production. She even had her own agent. I can't forget one of her best performances, which spilled onto the streets of our very own town. After being hypnotized in the Rialto, she chased an imaginary leprechaun around the Derry city walls with myself in tow. Everyone loved watching Claire. Enthralled by the performance and almost hypnotized by her magnetism, she filled any room with happiness and laughter. Out of school, our days were often spent in our rooms, with Claire strumming along on her guitar with Eddie Reader or her Brian Kennedy playing in the background. She loved writing wee funny poems and doing impersonations which would have us in fits of laughter. During exam time, when I got all serious, she was not allowed in. Not by my parents, but by me. I was in full-blown study mode, scribbling away on my whiteboard, talking to myself and my imaginary class. Meanwhile, she'd be busy making me cassette tapes and secretly passing them to my mommy, who would then deliver them to me. These tapes were of Claire's most recently created character, Johnny. Johnny was a typical wee dairy fella who broadcast from an illegal radio station every evening from a secret location in the heart of the Brandywell, that being 12 Iona Court. Johnny was absolutely hilarious. He loved to push the boundaries and lived life on the wild side. He has always been one of my favorite Clare characters. In the summer, my family used to hire a wee cottage in Clawmanny for the festival. Myself, Claire, and our friend Danielle had many a laugh there. One story which springs to mind was the festival's beauty pageant and disco. We were all for it. The glad rags were dusted off, Avon's best coffee shimmer lipstick was on, we stank of Impulse's hint of musk, and most important of all, Claire's perm was volumized beyond belief. It was as stiff as a poker with a full bottle of Bristol hairspray. We trekked down the country roads, fighting off the flies, and we made it to the party epicenter, the parish hall. We were absolutely buzzing, 
and Claire had whipped us up into a frenzy. We opened the door and were surrounded by young boys and girls dancing with their mammies. The local priest was mingling through the dance floor. Claire's expression was priceless and her swift exit even better. At home we loved a weekly trip to the Stardust. Fake IDs at the ready and the glad rags picked, we were good to go. However, there was one condition. We, like Cinderella, had a curfew. On top of that, we were instructed not to return without Margaret's 210 special from the Bogside Chinese. <laughs> Claire was never impressed. Claire loved music. She listened to her Brian Kennedy and Eddie Reader until we were blue in the face. But her musical talents didn't stop there. One day, she told me we were forming a band and that we would be called the Electric Angels. She begged our friend Michelle to let us rehearse in her attic. The next Sunday, myself, Claire, Danielle and Michelle met up and put music to our first song. Written by Claire and entitled, Give Us a Chance. <laughs> it had a great wee tune and we thought we were brilliant. Eager for stardom, our first gig followed. Claire's uncle Martin was celebrating his birthday in the Derby Bar and she begged him to let us sing. <laughs> Margaret warned us it was only one song. Despite only having one song, Claire begged her aunts to shout for an encore. <laughs> but Margaret had none of it, and we were given a quick shift off the stage. Regardless, we were buzzing. Not so sure if it went down too well, because our first gig was sadly our last. We had joined the core youth group and met regularly on Sundays. Prayer was the focal point of the group, but the crack was also great. We had retreats in Termabaca, which we really enjoyed, and it was through core that I was given the opportunity to go to Spain for an Easter retreat. A few weeks before, my appendix ruptured and I had to have it removed. Knowing I wouldn't make the trip, one of the members asked if I'd like someone to take my place. The answer was obvious and Claire was delighted. Sure, who would turn down a week of partying in sunny Spain? Yes, you would stay in a monastery, but sure, why not? No walls of any monastery would keep her in. After calling to collect her ticket in the middle of the rosary, Claire's tune quickly changed. But a wee bit of uncertainty wouldn't stop her. She hopped on the bus, excited for sunny Spain, but as they sped off to the sound of holy music, her face painted a very different picture. I panicked a bit when she gave me the eyes, but to be honest, I was a wee bit relieved for myself. That bus journey was the beginning of Claire's journey to God. A very different journey and definitely one not anticipated. But as we here tonight can all agree, one which has proved so worthwhile for all of us on a global scale. I'll admit, I wanted her to come home, thought it was just a phase, and worried about her happiness. I finally got the chance to meet her after a few years when she had taken her vows. 
We met in Termabaca, and she looked so radiant, so content. We chatted in private, and sadly, this would be our last chat. Despite trying again to convince her to come home, she reassured me that she couldn't be happier, told me to stop fretting and panicking. She said that she'd always be with me. That remains till this very day. I'll finish now with a poem about a very special friendship. Like ours, a friendship that I am so grateful to have and a friend who is truly so very special. If ever there is a tomorrow when we are not together, there is something you must always remember. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you feel, and smarter than you think. But the most important thing is, even if we are apart, I'll always be with you. Thank you all very much for listening. Thank you so much, Sharon. And we now have our retreat prayers. We begin with our prayer to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. O most blessed Mother, heart of love, heart of mercy, ever listening, caring, consoling, hear our prayer. As your children, we implore your intercession with Jesus, your Son. Receive with understanding and compassion the petitions we place before you today. We are comforted in knowing your heart is ever open to those who ask for your prayer. We trust your gentle care and intercession to those whom we love and who are sick and lonely or hurting. Help all of us, Holy Mother, to bear our burdens in this life until we may share eternal life and peace with God forever. The prayer of St. Elizabeth of the Trinity's prayer to the Blessed Trinity. O oh my God, Trinity whom I adore, let me entirely forget myself, that I may abide in you, still and peaceful, as if my soul were ready in eternity. Let nothing disturb my peace, nor separate me from you. O my unchanging God, be that each moment may take me further into the depths of your mystery. Pacify my soul, make it your heaven, your beloved home and place of your repose. Let me never leave you there alone. May I ever be attentive, ever alert to my faith, ever adoring, and all given up to your creative action. O oh, my beloved Christ, crucified for love, would that I might be for your spouse of your heart. I would anoint you with glory. I would love you, even unto death. Yet I sense my frailty and ask you to adore me with yourself. Identify my soul with all the movements of your soul, Submerge me, overwhelm me, substitute yourself in me that my life may become but a reflection of your life. Come unto me as a door, redeemer, and saviour. O eternal word, word of my God, would that I might spend my life listening to you. Would that I might be fully receptive to learn all from you. In all darkness, all loneliness, all weakness, may I ever keep my eyes fixed on you Abide under your great light. O oh, my beloved star, fascinate me so that I may never be able to leave your radiance. O oh, consuming fire, spirit of love, descend into my soul and make all of me as an incarnation of the word, that I may be to him a super added humanity wherein he renews his mystery. And you, O oh, Father, bestow yourself and bend down to your little creature, seeing in her your only beloved Son, in whom you are well pleased. O my three, all my beatitude, 
infinite solitude, immensity in whom I lose myself, I give myself to you as I pray to be consumed. Enclose yourself in me that I may be absorbed in you so as to contemplate in your light the abyss of your splendor. Amen. Prayer for the canonization of Sister Clare. Heavenly Father, for your glory, that of your beloved Son, that of the Holy Spirit, and of that of the Mother of God, we ask that you grant us the grace. As a sign that the life of our sister Claire, Fraser Crockett, has been pleasing to you on earth, and that she is now rejoicing with you in heaven, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Thank you for joining us here tonight and all those who joined us on the webcam this evening. We stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go and glorify the Lord by your lives.